All right, if you guys could go ahead and stand up. Let's pray and then let's get into some worship. Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord, for everything that you do. Jesus, we thank you for salvation, that we can't earn it. There's nothing we can do to earn your love and your favor, God, but you love us unconditionally. And I pray that you show us, God, how to love with that agape love, God, that sacrificial, unconditional love, Father. Meet us here tonight, Holy Spirit, in Jesus' name, amen.
God. We thank you, God. We thank you, Father. You are worthy, Jesus. You are beautiful. You are everlasting, God. And tonight, we just want to make it about you, God. We just want to make it about you. We want you to have the glory, Lord. We want you to know how much we adore you, God, how much we worship and praise your name. And thank you for standing on the promises that you've made us, God.
never comes to fight for me Spirit, we just thank you for showing up here again. Come 
Father, dear Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord, for tonight. Lord, we thank you for your presence. Lord, we thank you that we get to come here today and serve, uh, worship you. Lord, we thank you, Lord, for your unfailing, unfathomable, and unending love. Lord, I thank you for all the people here tonight, regardless of their reasoning, Lord. And I pray that you show how much you love them, how much you yearn to have a relationship with them reveal all the ways you have fought for them and worked in their lives for their good. Lord, I just pray over Pastor Noah tonight. I pray that you anoint his words. I pray that you strengthen him, you embolden him. And I pray that you soften hearts, Lord, and that there be chains broken, hearts changed, Lord, and miracles. I speak, I claim victory in the name of Jesus. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Hey, tell your neighbor I got your back. Hey, and, and mean it, too, and mean it. <laughs> uh, man. Hey, for real, though, hey, there's so many, so, so many people right now who are going through the battle of their life. So, like, some people are, are literally battling for their life. If, if, if they don't make it through this trial, through this tribulation right now in front of them, hey, they may not have a tomorrow. They may not have a second chance. Some of you guys have been through that battle for your life, right? And you've overcome in the name of Jesus. Praise God. Hallelujah. Amen. All right, you guys are able to stand here today and testify to the, the faithfulness uh, of our God and his goodness. And so today we're going to continue on our sermon series called Battleship. Battleship, right? We've been talking about just uh, the church and, and what the church is really meant for and what the people of God are, are designed to do, right? It, it's so important that uh, we begin to really shift just our, our perspective as the church, right? We, we got to kind of shift from this perspective that uh, the church and its building is a place to come and, and just hear this motivational message and hear just some really good worship, right? And, and, and while that's, that's great, there's nothing wrong with that. The church is designed for so much more than just people to come and hear a motivational message and hear some good music. Amen? Amen. <clears throat> the church, first and foremost... It, 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 it's, it's not a, a, a building, it's, it's the people of God, right? That's what the church is. The, the church is a, a, a body of people that come together, that gather together for the sole mission and purpose of worshiping Yahweh, Jehovah God, and then going out and making Christ known to the world. That's what, that's what it's about. That's what we come together. That's what we gather for. Right, we, we come together, you guys are coming together right now to get your marching orders to go back out in the world into your day-to-day -day lives and seek and save that which is lost. 
right, to, 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 to lead a lost and dying generation to Jesus. So the church is in a place to escape the pressures of life and hide from the world around us, right? The church is the very bulwark that God has created to fight evil, right? God has not only saved us from something, He's not only saved us from sin. He's not only saved us from spending an eternity separated from him, but, but God has saved us for something, right? And that's important for us to, to understand and, and realize because it's important that we're not just taking our faith and just sitting around with it and just holding it for ourselves, right? Jesus said we're, we're, we're like a, a, a city on a hill, Right? You, can't lie, you can't hide that light. Right? Well, we're meant to go out in the world and share what it is that God has done inside of us. Share the gospel message. Right? I don't see a place in scripture where we get to choose not to take the gospel to the ends of the earth. I don't see in scripture where we're not supposed to fight for our brothers and sisters in Christ. I said fight for them, right? Not fight with them, but fight for them. So often we end up fighting with them, right? Whether, whether they're in the same church body or whether they're outside the church body, the, the, the church, we're, we're meant to come together. We're meant to link arms, link our shields of faith together and fight the fight of faith. United. But what happens, what, what happens for, for so many Christians, I think that they forget just what it is that being the church is all about, right? Because it, it's really easy to, to, to find your identity in, 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 in the building, right? It's, re it's really easy to say, well, I, I belong to the well church and, and, and the pastors over there are Jake Schmidley and Noah Husky and Selena Freeman. Right, and then your identity becomes wrapped up in, in them, right? But your identity is wrapped up in Christ, right? That's what it's all about, being in Christ, being found in Christ, being formed in him and who he is, right? It's not about belonging to a certain church with a certain leader that can speak something that resonates with you. Right? Being the church is about being changed by God through the gospel of Jesus Christ and living that change out and pointing others to the hope of the cross. But I think that what happens sometimes is that just the everyday battles that people go through, right? The struggles, the trials, the temptations, all, all, all the different things that the enemy throws at us within our life, within our, our day to day. I, th I think that sometimes those, those battles that we encounter and that we go through, they cause us just to be lax, right? They, they, they kind of they just dull us from fulfilling what it is that we're called to fulfill, right? Be because so often, whenever you're going through a struggle, you're going through a trial, man, it's real, Right? It's hard. It's difficult. It's your life. Your life matters. Right? It, it, it's all that you know. And so, man, if the enemy can get you to focus on you and what you're going through, right? Because that's why he throws something at us. Okay, well, hey, guess what? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to put a disgruntled employee next to this person today. Right, and, and now all, the, all you can think about is whoever's next to you getting on your nerves. Right, hey, he's going to throw at you, uh, and then you got that, throw on top of the fact that you don't know if you're going to be able to pay rent, you don't know if you're ever going to be able to pay your cell phone, throw on top of that some, some kids, throw on top of that some marital tensions, throw on top of that some court cases, right, and all of a sudden... Man, all you see is the battle in front of you and you're focused on you. You're focused on me. Me and what I'm going through and what I'm struggling with and what I'm dealing with and what I, 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 and then you completely forget about we. You, you forget about being the body of Christ. You forget that there's brothers and sisters right there alongside of you and you forget, right, that the battle's already been won. Hey, that, that one way or another, our God provides. Our God will see us through. It may not be what we want it to be, right? It may not look like the way that we want it to look like, 
Right? Hey, we may not get to keep the house that we wanted to keep. Right? We may not get to keep the job that we wanted to get to keep. Hey, but one way or another, our God will see us through to the other side. That's why it's so important for each of us, for each of us to be reminding one another that the battle is already won, that victory is ours, right? That we, we can claim and we can know that God will see us through, right? But we need, we need each other. We truly do. Hey, it, 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 whenever I'm stuck in the middle of my mess and I can't see anything, I can't see past my trials and my tribulations, I need a brother or sister to say, hey, brother, guess what? <laughs> I need them to hold me accountable to the truth, right? I need them to remind me of what's going on, uh, uh, that, that, that God will walk me through this, right? We need our brothers and sisters in Christ to hold us accountable to the standard of Christ, to encourage us, to walk alongside of us, right? We need one another in the battles of life, right? A, a, a good unit, like a good military unit, Man, that functions really well, they know each other, right? They, 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 they have a, a, a deep love and reverence for one another. They care for one another, right? Because they've shared themselves. They've done life with one another. And then because of that, they're better together, right? We're, we're better together. I want to I, I, I preach a message to you today called Better Together. Right? If the enemy... If the enemy can, can get you to isolate yourself or, or he can get you alone, the enemy knows that he can keep you from fulfilling your purpose, right? Because if you're by yourself, you're focused on yourself. You're, you're in it alone and you're all by yourself. You don't have nobody fighting with you, right? But if you're connected to the body of Christ and you're with the body of Christ, man, you're not alone. You're not alone. Not only do you have your brothers and sisters, but you got God Almighty fighting for you. But when we're alone and we're isolated and we're disconnected from the body of Christ and we don't have the encouragement of our brothers and sisters and we don't have the accountability of our brothers and sisters, it's really easy to get off course really quickly. If the enemy can get us to isolate ourselves, he, can cut a, he'll, he will cut us off from the people in our lives. We were created for community, right? We were created for community. We were created to live in harmony with one another as God's giftings and God's talents work through each and every one of us, empowering us to fulfill our call as the church. Right? Did you know at, 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 the, at the very, like a, a child... Whenever we're born, we need just the connection that we have with our, our mother and our father. We need that community right there to be able to develop the way that we need to develop. Whenever a child doesn't have its mother and father there to love them and to nurture them and to care for them the way that they're supposed to, as they grow up, hey, they have developmental issues. They're not able to connect with the rest of the world the way that we were designed to do. And so it very much so that that thing that 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 whole like design of being able of needing community with a mother and father it, it flows out into the rest of our life too right it, it, just like we need our, our mother and father when we're younger we need community as we get older we need the connections with the people around us to be able to live out what God has designed us to be we need people to walk alongside of us praying for us, speaking into our lives, sharing wisdom, giving direction, giving guidance, giving, giving correction, right? We need to be corrected. Sometimes we need somebody to come along and say, hey, you, 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 this is not what you're supposed to be doing, right? This isn't the way that you're supposed to be living. It says that war, war, war is won by many advisors, if the president of the United States just went into war and didn't consult his staff and didn't consult uh, the generals and everybody, man, and he just went in, he's just like, man, I'm just going to nuke them, <laughs> right? I'm just going to take them out. <laughs> man, that's not wise. 
That's not smart. He needs, he needs the rest of his counsel coming alongside of him, telling him the pros and cons of all the different decisions that he can make and what could be the possible outcomes. And then he can make an informed decision. Right? It, it, it's important that we not just go into the battles of life on our own, making decisions without consulting other people. Disaster can ensue. And since we're all on the same mission, with the same purpose, right, to make Christ known in the world and to live according to who he is in us, we can't do that alone. Not, not a single one of us can do that by ourselves, right? None of us possess all of the skills and the wisdom needed to see that job through, right? Not, not, not a single one of us can go and, and fulfill what it is that we're supposed to do as the body of Christ, right? The giftings and the talents that you have, man, you have something that somebody else doesn't have. Somebody else has something that you don't have, Right? They have the abilities to connect with people, to see things, to do things that you and I can't. Right? And so all of us together, we have to be uh, on a collective effort, working together, working alongside one another so that we really can do battle. For me, my, my natural propensity is to be alone. <laughs> Uh, my, my natural, I just naturally want to be in my office and read and study. Most of the rest of the staff, they will be in Hannah's office and they will congregate and they will be in there and, and they will, you know, have fun and talk. And I'm going to be in my office and I'm going to be working and I'm going to be praying and it's going to be me and the Lord. That's just, that's just me naturally, even at home. Hey, I, I, I prefer to be with myself and with my thoughts and with the Lord. I was an only child most of my life. And so as an only child, you're usually by yourself. My parents would get tired of, of listening to me talk. And they say, hey, go, go talk to the dogs for a little bit, okay? I'm like, oh, oh, okay. So as I got older, as I got older, I still preferred to be by myself and as I got uh, in the streets and around you know not so nice people I definitely preferred to be my by, by myself because I didn't trust anybody else and to be honest I didn't necessarily trust myself around other people right if if because I didn't know it may be one of those days right where you know man hey you got something that I want and there's nothing that stopped me from getting what I wanted right and, and so I, I, I naturally did not build relationships with people, right? I naturally kept people at a distance. And so coming to Christ, becoming a part of a church, right? It, it, like l trying to listen to what the pastors and the preachers told me that I'm supposed to do life with other people, that I'm supposed to come alongside other people and I'm supposed to get wisdom and gain wisdom from other people. Hey, that didn't come overnight. I'll be honest, it, it, it didn't come easy overnight. While I accepted it as truth, and, and, and I, I began to apply it, I began to look for people that I looked up to, that I respected, that I admired, and I began to ask them questions, and I began to, to use them as a sounding board, getting advice from them, allowing them to speak into my life, correct me when necessary. I wouldn't be the man I am today if it wasn't for the people that spoke into my life, right? And so no matter how hard and no, no matter how difficult it may be for you, you may be a person that says, hey, like, I, I'd just rather be by myself. I'd rather not include anybody in my life. I, it's been me and myself this whole journey, and it's going to be me and myself the journey ahead. I mean, I, I would challenge you to change that, to shift that perspective. You don't have to invite everybody in your life, man, but get a few people, right? Get a few wise people into your life. Use them as a sounding board. Man, allow them to speak truth into your life, to correct you whenever necessary. Each and every one of us, each and every one of us are vitally important to each other. As the body of Christ, here, here's the reality. We will probably never know every single person that is within this church. 
It's not realistic to think that you'll get to sit down and get to know every single person that comes to this church, whether on Fridays or whether on Sundays. But I promise you that everybody that comes into this church affects everybody in this church in some way, shape, or form. Okay, because whatever it is that you're going through, whatever it is that you're dealing with, whatever type of battles you're going through in your life, they affect you, right? They have an effect upon you, which has an effect on the people around you, right? Which then affects the other people around them, which then affects everybody, right? Your life, it matters to the ethos of this whole church, Right, because it, 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 we're called to rejoice with those who rejoice, to weep with those who weep. Right, what you carry, what you walk in here with, man, it, 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 it transmits to the people around you. Right, and, and so your life, how you handle situations, how you deal with your life, how you walk through things, right, the type of faith that you have, man, it matters. Right, it matters to the entire body. Right, and the people here, there is people who want to walk alongside of you, who want to go through the journey with you. But we each have to be intentional, right? To have a circle of friends, have a circle of friends who you're deeply connected with, fighting the fight of faith, sharpening one another and giving each other guidance to live up to the standard of Christ. Listen, we, we, we need to help one another depend upon God for victory in our battles against the enemy. I can't even begin to count the amount of times in my walk where I've heard uh, of God moving in an individual's life and it encourages me, right? And it builds my faith and it helps me to remember in my present situations, whatever thoughts I'm dealing with, whatever circumstance or situation I'm dealing with, that if God got them through their situation, God's going to see me through mine, right? And so it's important for us to be around one another, encouraging one another that our God is moving, our God is working, is fighting battles for us, amen? But it's when I start to do things on my own that issues start to come up, right? Whenever I start to focus more on what's broken than I do the fixer, right? That's whenever I feel like I'm losing a battle, right? That's whenever I start to, the enemy begins to start to gain ground in my life. Whenever I, I, I'm more focused on what this person isn't doing or what that person is doing rather than on what God is doing, that's whenever we start to give ground and a foothold to the enemy. All right, whenever I start to come up with all the to-dos and, and the strategies on, on my own is when things start to turn south. Man, there's been situations and conversations that I've gone into without praying about, without bouncing my ideas and my thoughts off of somebody. And I've walked into those situations with a picture painted that was not correct. Right? I just knew that this person thought this about me and saw me this way and saw this situation this way. And I went into it thinking that, and, and I walked into that conversation realizing really quickly that I was far off, right? Ended up hurting them, ended up hurting myself. Right, but the situations and the conversations that I've bounced, hey, I, I, am I thinking this correctly? Am I right in what I'm thinking here? No, no, you're not right, Noah. Okay, great, thank you. Hey, it, 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 it changed the outcome, it, it changed how I was able to interact in those conversations. I mean, it's important to have people in your life as a sounding board. Right, being in the body of Christ and participating in the things that we have here at the well, right? Doing life with other believers, being in a life group, coming to the Bible studies, like doing life outside of these four walls of the church, right? It's important that we do life with other believers who want to live like Christ and make Christ known, right? It's what reminds us to stay prayed up. Right? It's what reminds us to trust and know that if God gave his son for us, 
right? If God gave his one and only son to die on the cross so that you and I can know him and be in relationship with him, then surely God is going to provide in the situations that we're going through. Surely God is going to come through and see us through whatever it is that we're going through. And if I'm leaning on him, if you and I, if we're leaning on the Lord in those situations, no matter what the outcome of that situation is, then we're going to be better off on the other side of the issue, no matter what, because we're trusting in him. Our faith is going to be built up one way or another. And so today, we're, we're going to take a look at a story in the Bible that reflects the importance of depending on God for victory and the need to have others come alongside of us in life's struggles. And so we're going to be in Exodus 17, 8 through 13. And in this portion of scripture, Moses and the nation of Israel, they've just escaped from Egypt and they've been marching through the wilderness and they're on their way to the promised land. The only thing is, is that God didn't have them go the easy route. It would have been smart for them to go northeast out of Egypt. It would have been the quickest way. But God knew that if they went northeast, they would encounter the Canaanites. And the Canaanites were warriors. And, and, and if, if, if the nation of Israel would have encountered some warriors and been involved in battle as soon as they left Egypt, they would have been, went straight back to Egypt. They would have went back to Egypt like, hey, we're sorry. <laughs> Can we come back? <laughs> and so God's like, hey, no, we're going we're gonna to send you south. And so they go south. Uh, and uh, luckily, though, they've had enough time to really see God move and see God work uh, that they're prepared to encounter the enemy. And so here the nation of Israel encounters an enemy and they're forced to fight. And it says, while the people of Israel were still at Rephidim, the warriors of Amalek attacked them. So Moses commanded Joshua to choose some men to go out and fight the army of Amalek for us. Now, I don't know about you, but right there is interesting for me. Right, we're talking about warriors Right, warriors, men. These, these are men who at a young age were malicious, bigger and stronger than all the other kids that got handpicked to learn how to fight and kill other people. Right, that's what a warrior is. And then you got the nation of Israel. It says that Joshua had to choose some men to go fight the army of Amalek. He had to go choose from a bunch of slaves. Right? Hey, these people, they had no formal training. They did not know how to wield a sword or, or hold a shield or, or sling a rock. Right? They weren't able to go train on how to fight. Right? Egypt definitely wasn't going to let them have a, a, a little gymnasium so they can learn how to, to fight an enemy. Egypt wasn't having none of that. And, and, and so right away, right, it, it's a moment for the nation of Israel to be scared to death. And it says, Moses says, tomorrow I will stand at the top of the hill holding the staff of God in my hand. Mind you, this is the same staff that Moses used to part the Red Sea. This is the, the same staff that Moses used and, and God moved to turn the Nile into blood. This is the same staff that turned into a serpent. Right, so this, is, this isn't just a, an ordinary staff. Right, but this is a staff in, in which God is in control of. And so it says, so Joshua did what Moses had commanded, and he fought the army of Amalek. Meanwhile, Moses, Aaron, and Hur climbed to the top of a nearby hill. As long as Moses held up the staff in his hand, the Israelites had the advantage. But whenever he dropped his hand and the Amalekites gained the advantage... Moses' arms soon became so tired he could no longer hold them up. So Aaron and Hur found a stone for him to sit on. Then they stood on each side of Moses, holding up his hands, so his hands held steady until sunset. And as a result, Joshua overwhelmed the army of Amalek in battle. And so if you know your Bible, uh, Jacob 
and Esau, it said, God said, Jacob I love and, and Esau I hated. Really, it, it means uh, Esau I, I loved less than Jacob, uh, but we won't get into that. Anyways, Jacob and Esau were at war with each other. They were brothers. They did not like each other. Jacob was the younger brother. Esau was the older brother. Jacob ended up taking what was Esau's, and so they were at war from then on. Jacob and Esau ended up uh, making amends, but their ancestors continued to hate each other. And so the Amalekites are descendants of Esau. And so anytime you see the Amalekites show up, Right Throughout the Old Testament, they pose as enemies of Yahweh, which really translates to them being instruments that the forces of evil would use to try to defeat the people of God. Hey, you guys have some of those people in your life. Hey, you have some people in your life who the enemy uses to try to defeat you and bring you down. But on this particular day, Right after Israel had been wandering in the wilderness, tired, hungry, and thirsty, that's when the enemy decided to strike. Of course, he didn't strike whenever they were well-fed and energetic and ready to go. It, it, it was whenever they were at their worst. Right? In, in fact, it, it says the Amalekites, in another, in another portion of Scripture, it says that the Amalekites didn't just uh, uh, attack the nation of Israel. It, it, they attacked the, the back portion of the procession of the nation of Israel, right? They, they, they attacked the ones who were extra tired, the ones who were extra weak, the ones who were struggling behind the main body of the nation of Israel. Now, mind you, God, up until this point, God has... Uh, fed the people of Israel with quail and manna from heaven. He has uh, given them water uh, through um, not only did he turn a, um, a portion of water, a body of water that was undrinkable into drinkable water, but he made water come out of a rock to provide for them, right? But, but this whole time, the, the nation, they're not in a good headspace, Right? They're not exactly happy that they've been freed from the Egyptians. Right? You would think that after being freed from years and years and years of oppression and slavery and just misuse and being treated and, and, and mistreated and abused, that they'd be excited that they're out from underneath this tyranny. But some of them are saying, God, why did you bring us out here? Did you bring us out here because Egypt didn't have enough graves for us? Did you bring us to the wilderness because there's enough space to bury us? Right? They're, they're in a, a very bad headspace. Right? They're having a hard time trusting that this was the right move. Right? The people of Israel just couldn't get to a place where they truly trusted that the Lord was going to protect them and provide for them. Right? He, he, they couldn't really trust that he had given them uh, a new life in the promised land, free from oppression and free from being slaves to Egypt. Right? We can so often adopt similar mindsets as the nation of Israel when they were wandering through the wilderness. Right? We, we, we come to salvation and we come to a, a, a relationship and a revelation of Christ. And, and, and we're, we're told that we're free from sin. Right? And, and sometimes we're like, okay, well, is this new life really worth it? Is it really worth leaving all of those other things behind? Is it really worth leaving the past behind me? Leaving that life of sin We can wonder, is God really going to protect me? Has he really empowered me to live free from the strongholds that once held me bound? Is he really going to satisfy me in my need? Right? Is he really going to show up for me and protect me and provide for me? And the answer is yes. Yes and amen he will. Hey, you're still, hey, still going to be thirsty. Right, you're still gonna be hungry. Right, you're still gonna get attacked by the enemy. 
But that does not change the promise. That does not change the truth. It didn't change the truth for them, and it doesn't change the truth for us. Just because you may still you, you may still have a thought of using or you still may have a thought of drinking, it doesn't mean that you're not free. Right? Because they were still free. They they didn't believe, they didn't believe that God was gonna satisfy them in their hunger and in their thirst. Hey, but it didn't change God from from showing up and, and, and providing for them. Right? Hey, so even even in our lack of faith, God still proves faithful. Man, that's important for somebody to know today. Right? And just because you've been freed from sin and you're no longer a captive and bound by the enemy doesn't mean that he's not going to attack you. In fact, I promise you, if you're tired and you're weak, the enemy's coming. Hey, you may not see where he's going to come from. He may come from behind. He may come from somebody that you least expected. But the enemy's coming. He's going to attack you one way or another. But are you going to have faith? Right, because that's all you need to get you through the battle. Hey, there's no special formula. There's no special concoction. All you need to have is faith. Trusting that God is going to make it through, that God is going to see you through. All right, trust and believe that if you're a, a new believer and you've just recently given your life to the Lord, that there's going to come a time and there's going to come a moment if it hasn't already and out of nowhere the enemy is going to attack you. He's going to try to get you from living out God's promise. But we have to hold fast to the fact that the promise is ours. Right? The promised land was Israel's future and God saw them through to it. And Christ is our promise and God will make a way for us in our battles and in our struggles. There's a few things I want to point out from this text that will help us and encourage us. First is, is that your gifts are useful and unique, right? And so whenever I say that your gifts are useful for battle, this is not only the battle for the fight for souls, but this is like the battle for everyday life, right? Those battles to, to fight for your children, for your marriages, for your court cases, to get your finances in order, to learn how to spend time wisely, Right, gaining wisdom, getting a car. You name the battle, you have to know. It doesn't matter what, what the battle is that you're facing in your life. You've got to know what you are capable of and what you aren't. Right? It, you got to know what, what it is that you can do and what it is that you can't do. Because if you try to do something that you're not capable of, hey, it's going to end in disaster. I promise you that, and you're going to waste your time. Man, it's important that, 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 all, that you understand, though, that your gifts are valuable to the battle, not only for you, but for those around you. Listen, you got to notice in, in the text in Exodus 17 that when the enemy attacked Israel, Moses didn't assemble troops. Right? Moses didn't go and fight the battle. Moses was 80 years old. And he knew while he was a, a great leader, he didn't have an eye for military prowess like Joshua did. Moses knew what he brought to the table and he knew what was needed in the situation and delegated the assignment to the right person. You got to realize that the people of Israel, like I said, they weren't military trained. They were all slaves, right? They, they had no weapons of their own while in captivity, and they weren't trained on how to use any weapons. So, so for Joshua to be tasked with, with this endeavor, right? it's important because if Joshua didn't pick the right people, hey, they may not see it through to the promised land. So Joshua's task was important. It was vital to Israel making it to uh, the promised land. So Joshua had to choose men who trusted God and had faith that God would see them through this battle. Right, this, this reason that is so important is because we battle through life together as the church. Right, and, and, and whatever situation you're going through, you're not alone in it. You have the entire body of Christ behind you. Right, you never, you never know how or when the enemy will attack you. 
And if you don't have the gifts needed to overcome the situation, hey, then you better believe that God has someone in the body who does. That there's somebody who has the giftings, there's somebody who has the talents, there's somebody who has the faith to come alongside you and help you in the battle. All right, and if it's your opportunity to step up and use your gifts, man, then use them to bring glory to God and to help those around you to overcome the enemy. Right, but you have to be moving, you have to be doing things with faith. Right, Joshua did it all on faith. He just trusted, okay, Lord, is this person going to be fit for battle? Yep, okay, let's go. Right, th th this is called a, a holy war, right? It wasn't just a, a, a clash for, for land and, and to see who was more macho than the other person. Man, this was a battle uh, 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 of gods, right? This is saying our God is bigger and stronger than your God. Right, every time, so every time the nation of Israel would go out to fight, they would, they would um, recite Deuteronomy 1 through 20. Because, because listen, we, we, we can't just trust in our gifts and in our talents. Right, your gifts and your talents are important, but we have to be dependent upon God when we're fighting our battles. Right, we have to be dependent upon God. Right, our, our gifts and our talents, those are great. But we have to use our gifts and our talents while depending upon God to win the battle for us. Right? It's implied that when Moses stood at the top of the mountain with the staff of God raised above his head, that he was praying over the battle too. But Moses wasn't depending on his prayer. Moses wasn't depending on the staff to win the battle. Moses was depending upon God. Right, he was declaring, this is my dependence upon you, God. Right, he, he in fact, a, after the battle's over, he creates this altar, and he calls this altar Jehovah Nisi, which means my God is my banner. Right, and so just like uh, other, other nations and troops would walk out with a flag and a banner uh, with their symbol and their name, like in their country and their flag on it, he says, we're going to walk out with Jehovah as our banner. Right, God is going before us and fighting for us. Right, it represented Israel's dependence upon God to win the battle for them. So every time the staff would come down, they would start to lose ground in the battle. Right, every time you and I don't put God in charge and we don't put God above us, by fixing our eyes, our hearts, and our minds on Christ, the enemy has power to defeat us and push us back. Right? But if we'll keep Christ above all things, then victory is ours. Right? But, but, but if, we're, if, if, we're, if we're more worried about, okay, well, what, what if this is going wrong? What if this doesn't happen? What, what if I do this? And what if, what if this person wouldn't have done that? Well, then we're not busy up here with our hands up here saying, okay, God, you got this. You're going to see me through it. God, I trust you. Right? Whenever we're over here trying to move everything and position everything and hold on to everything and make everything work and do what it is that we want it to do, man, then we don't have our hands here and praise and worship. Right? God, I trust you. God, I'm going to do my part. God, I'm going to do what it is that you've tasked me to do, but I trust you that you're going to move. That even though this person may not have done what I think that they should have do, then God, you're still going to come through. Right, because it's God going before us. It's God fighting the battle for us. In Deuteronomy 20, 1 through 20, right, they, they listed all these different things. Right, but, but one of the things that sticks out, they say, Hear, O Israel, today you are drawing near for battle against your enemies. Let not your heart faint. Do not fear or panic or be in dread of them. For the Lord your God is he who goes with you to fight for you against your enemy to give you the victory. Right, should any of the person getting ready to go and fight lack faith? Or, or, or be cowardly, they would ask them, go ahead and leave. Go ahead and just exit the stage now. <laughs> hey, if you don't trust that God is fighting for us, that God is going to have the victory, then go ahead and just exit stage left. But right? because it, it, it's that faith knowing, 
if God has sent us, if God told us to go, if God told us to fight, then he's, then he's going to see us through. Right? They would never go to war. They would never go to war without being prompted by God. They would never fight a battle unless it was for the promised land or if it was for defending the promised land. Right, so if you're, if you're fighting a battle that isn't about being in Christ and fulfilling the call of God and being a man or a woman of the Lord, if it's a battle that's anything that's not like that, hey, you might as well just not go into that battle. Hey, because God's not going to fight that battle for you. But if it's a battle that honors God, that's near to his heart, that God's called you to, man, then have faith, have hope, have trust. Know that God's going to see you through it. Now, I know that the the battle against the flesh and the old man, it can be hard. It can be difficult, right? But God has given us countless promises telling us that if we hold fast to our faith in Christ and in the gospel message, that we have freedom and we can walk in freedom, right? That if we walk by the Spirit, And you can't walk by the Spirit if you don't have faith. But if we walk in the Spirit, we will not gratify the desires of the flesh. And so if you're having a battle, you're you're battling temptations to go back to the old life, man, let faith rise up in your heart and know that you don't have to go back there, that you have the power to walk free. The enemy cannot defeat us when we are dependent upon God, period. Period. No matter the outcome of the situation, no matter the diagnosis that placed in front of us, when we depend on God, the enemy cannot steal our joy. He cannot steal our hope. And he cannot steal the truth that there is an eternity waiting for us who are in Christ Jesus that far exceeds anything we endure this side of heaven. But as we fight the fight of faith, depending on God, we need to bear each other's burdens. Moses not only endured the burden of Israel's negative attitude time and time again, he would carry the burden of Israel before God in prayer and intercession. Right, Much like Jesus carried the burden of our sins on the cross, we are called to carry the burdens of others around us. When you're a person who steps up for the people around you and helps carry their burdens, hey, people will come to your aid without asking you when you need help to carry your burdens. Moses didn't ask him to come help, right? They saw that Moses needed help and they stepped up. Man, if you see somebody in the body of Christ who needs help, man, step up. Step up and help them. Step up and help meet the need that they have. That's what we're called to do. We're called to come alongside one another. Now, this isn't just like fix it and do everything for them, right? But if they're going through it and they're trying, right? They're trying to live a life that honors God. They're trying to live according to the standard of Christ. They're doing what they need to do. Step up and help them, right? If you see someone struggling to be dependent on God, trying to live a life that honors God, then we, the body, needs to step up and carry the load for that person so they can keep God where he belongs. Just like Aaron and her stepped up to hold up Moses' arms and get him a seat, you need people around you who will come to your aid when you have no strength and who will tell you to rest in the finished work of Christ so that you can make it through the battle. Ecclesiastes 4, 9 through 13 says, two people are better off than one, for they can help each other succeed. If one person's f- person falls, the other can reach out and help. But someone who falls alone is in real trouble. Likewise, two people lying close together can keep each other warm, but how can one be warm alone? A person standing alone can be attacked and defeated, but two can stand back to back and conquer. Three are even better for a triple braided cord is not easily broken. God never created us to go at this thing alone. Man, don't be a lone wolf trying to make it through life storms on your own. Man, even the lone ranger had Tonto, 
right? The Lone Ranger didn't go at it alone. Don't try and struggle through life's temptations to use or slip back into the old way on your own. Man, find your Aaron, find your her, find those people who will hold your arms up when times are hard and help you get back on the right path should you fall. When we fight together back to back, we're able to conquer and overcome, especially when Christ is holding the friendship together and you can conquer through him. Will you guys stand with me? We need to help one another be depend, depend upon God for victory in our battle against the enemy. Right, we're always better together. I know that for many people you've been hurt in the past, right? It's hard for you to trust other people. Man, I feel you there. I get it. Man, but it, it's worth letting down your walls a little bit and letting some people into your life and inviting people into the battles that you're going through. Man, you've got to find those people you can trust, so You've got to let them into the battles that you're facing. We're going to open up the altar. And I want those of you who are ready to fight alongside your brothers and your sisters, I want you to come and I want you to pray that God would give you eyes to see those who need help carrying their burdens so that you can come alongside of them. Those of you who don't quite have the desire to help others, man, I ask God to give you a heart that wants to help, right? a heart that wants to participate with the body of Christ. Hey, if you're in a battle right now and you're used to fighting everything on your own and in your own strength, come down to the altar and declare your dependence upon God. Right, if it wasn't for him, we wouldn't be here now. Right, if it wasn't for him seeing me through all the battles I've been through, I wouldn't be standing here today. And if, it, and if God doesn't show up in the battles I'm going through now, I'm not gonna make it. God, if you don't show up and you don't get us through this, we're not going to make it through the other side. And so let's declare our victory over the enemy today. Amen? Amen. So God, we thank you, Lord. God, I thank you for the victory over sin. God, I thank you for the victory over death. God, I thank you for the new life and the promised land, God, that awaits each one of us who are in Christ Jesus. And God, I just pray right now for my brothers and my sisters who are struggling, God, who are going through the battles in their life, who are, who are facing trials and tribulations. God, I pray that faith would rise up in their hearts. God, I pray that they would trust you. God, that they would be dependent upon you, God. That the enemy would not steal their joy. That the enemy would not steal their hope. God, that they would persevere and endure through life's trials and tribulations, God. God, I pray that you would strengthen your people and that you would keep your people. I pray this in Jesus' name. Oh, 
We thank you that you've already won the battle, Jesus. We lift up your name. Our scars can never compare to your scars that you got on the cross that day. We can never be washed clean if it wasn't for the blood. And we thank you for the blood. And we thank you for making a way for us, Jesus. Your miracles will never end. Can I get the prayer team down front, please? Who's thankful for a way-making God in this place tonight? Thank you, Lord. We're going to enter into our next act of worship tonight, a time of anointing and prayer. We get this act of worship from James chapter 5, 13 through 16. Are any of you suffering hardships? You should pray. Are any of you happy? You should sing praises. Come on. Are any of you sick? You should call for the elders of the church to come and pray over you, anointing you with oil in the name of the Lord. Such a prayer offered in faith will heal the sick, and the Lord will make you well. And if you have committed any sins, you will be forgiven. Confess your sins to each other and pray for each other. So that way you may be healed. The earnest prayer of a righteous person has great power and produces wonderful results. We hear the well, we don't believe that there's power in the oil. We believe and we know that there's power in your faith. There's power in your obedience. And, and like Pastor Noah was talking about tonight, we are better together. So let, come on down tonight and let us join and, and lock shield with you and let us pray.
So we 